Mont Saint Michel. The Mont Saint Michel was on a river that separated Normandy from Brittany. And here we met some of the other correspondents. This is Bob Capper of Time Magazine. And I know there's a member in the audience who uh, knew Bob Capper. And Bob Capper was eventually killed. He was covering the war in Indochina when the French was fighting. But at Mont Saint Michel, we found uh, the Poulard Hotel run by Madame Poulard. And the reason we <coughs> liked the place is she served some delicious omelets for which she was famous. And that's Madame Poulard and her famous hotel in the background. And uh, a lot of the correspondents gathered here to fight the war from this point because we were closer to the front line, if you could call it such, uh, than we were at our main bases. And there we see the river that separates Normandy from Brittany. This is a beautiful little island, and the building at the top is a monastery that was still intact. It was not destroyed at all. And here are some of our GIs looking over the sites of the <coughs> monastery, being shown around by a woman guide. <coughs> Soon we met some of the other correspondents we knew, and here we see Charles Collingwood, the uh, gentleman on the right, with Helen Kirkpatrick of the Chicago Daily News, and Joe Liebling of New Yorker Magazine, the ball-headed chap, and Werdenbecker on the extreme left. Liebling uh, wrote many stories for New Yorker Magazine, and he uh, died not many years ago. This is Charles Collingwood and uh, Helen Kirkpatrick of the uh, Chicago Daily News. This is Ernie, uh, rather Ernest Hemingway. Hemingway was covering for Collier's Magazine, and we met him at uh, Mont Saint Michel. Here he is seen talking with Bill Walton, who uh, incidentally became a fast friend of uh, President Kennedy. And these are just moments that we could take a little time out to rest. There's Helen Kirkpatrick. And uh, the man in the center in this picture is Bill Stringer. And he was killed trying to get into Paris. One of the things that correspondents tried to do was to get into Paris before anyone else. And uh, he was hit by an 88 shell. But uh, this is just a moment of relaxation. We had a few. And of course, uh, these are the shots I wanted to bring home to the family and friends. But uh, the little island was very quaint, and it was a very old place, but it was fortified in several ways. We discovered that the beaches on, in the area, uh, especially when the tide was out, would be high and dry, and they put those sticks in the sand to keep our planes from landing. We found a little family of three brothers, and this, they're, they're, even the tall blonde one is a boy, I found out later, because their grandmother was taking care of them. Their parents, I was told, were killed at the Battle of St. Lowe. One afternoon, rather late, I walked out behind the island because as the sun was setting, I could get some interesting shots of the island from the seaside because they have an extremely high tide here and would leave the island high and dry, but the tide would come in real fast and there was always danger of quicksand, so I didn't stand in one place too long but the receding waters left this unusual design in the sand. We didn't stay at Mont Saint-Michel very long, but continued on deeper into France. 